So now we will consider the hedging methods available for forex risk. So foreign currency risk management is what we are going to deal now. So there are like several methods here. So one is called as the internal hedging methods and the other one is called as hedge, external hedging methods. So we will discuss each of these methods in detail. So we'll start from the internal hedging methods. So the first one is, if you're going to enter into a forex transaction with the another party, the best option for you is to not do anything. So what happens is, you're not going to take any hedging mechanisms to protect you from the forex risk. That is, you accept, you accept the forex risk. So why do you do that? Because you feel that in the long run, uh, what would have happen is sometimes you will get a forex gain, but sometimes you will have a forex loss. Both will, both will be like compensating each other. So doing nothing, uh, do nothing is a better option. They feel they feel this is because this method works for small occasional transactions and it saves in the transaction cost. Okay, so you don't need to. So when the gains and losses are going to uh, nullify each other then you are only going to waste transaction cost in trying to hedge your forex risk so the second one is to deal in your currency for example you sell a good and your parity works like this you are selling a good for one dollar okay to a foreign company and you feel that you will get 70 rupees and after a month when the foreign company gives you one dollar the rupee is at 60 so what happens is when you price in their terms only the problem arises better what you can do is you can ask the foreign customer to pay you in your currency so what happens is uh, if he has to pay you 70 rupees in respect to of whatever is going to be the currency parity he will always pay you 70 rupees so does it mean that uh, the forex risk is like uh, uh, gone away the answer is no the forex risk is still there but you have shifted the forex risk from yourself to the foreign company. So, but can you work out this in all the cases? No. The answer is you have to be, your company has to be and your products has to be in such a strong position that the other party is willing to accept the forex risk. Insist all customers pay in your own home currency and for all imports in home currency. This method transfers risk to the other party but may not be commercially acceptable in the long run so only when your product and your uh, services are so strong that the other party will be willing to pay in your home currency the next one is called as lagging so lagged payments delaying payments beyond their due date for goods purchased in a foreign currency for example what happens is assume that you have to pay one dollar and the rate today is 80 you feel that if you can delay it for another month the rate might become favorable to you and you only have to pay 70 rupees and get the dollar and pay it to the foreign company so what happens here is you are trying to delay the payment but this is not such an acceptable method because the foreign company might not uh, accept beyond a, a date okay or they will they will leave you a fine on you or they will uh, uh, not try to see you as a good customer so what happens is in the long run they might have a bad uh, they might have a bad reputation about you so lagging is acceptable within the payment terms there's something called as a leading so leading uh, refers like this assume that you have to you are going to receive a payment from a foreign customer so from a foreign customer you are going to receive a payment currently it is 70 rupees but in uh, but you feel that it might go to 60 rupees in the future so what you do is you are trying to make them pay now itself okay so you're asking for the income to be paid now itself okay so you can give some kind of a small discount or some kind of a benefit for the customer and try to get the dollar as quickly as possible so this can also be done in terms of a payment for example the current dollar price is like one dollar to 70 rupees and the, you feel that it might move against you in another two months time but the customer has given you two months time to 
to make the payment but what do you do is you try to pay it as soon as possible and try to lock the exchange rate at 70 rupees so even though he has given you two months time you feel that the price might go to 80 so you feel that it's better to make a payment now itself at 70 rupees for a dollar so that is called as leading payments so when a company has receipts and payments in the same foreign currency due at the same time it can simply match them against each other it is only necessary to deal on the forex markets for the unmatched portion of the total transaction we will see an example for this so assume that you are an indian company and you have bought 400 dollars of worth of goods from xyz and you have to pay it in three months time at the same time you have also sold goods worth of thousand to another company called as abc co and you are going to receive that amount in three months time so what happens is at one point of time there's an outflow in three months and one point of time you have an inflow of thousand dollars so how much of amount should you hedge the hedging amount will be only 600 okay so this minus 400 and the plus thousand would have to be uh, net off against each other so you are ending up with 600 dollars okay so this alone has to be hedged so the next method is called as netting netting is similar to the matching concept which we saw earlier netting is the process in which credit balances are netted off against debit balances so that only the reduced net amounts remain due to be paid by the actual currency flows many mnc companies engage in intra group trading where related companies located in different countries trade with one another that is likely to be inter company indebtedness denominated in different currencies so similar to matching concept what happens here is there might be several subsidiaries for example nestle company might have a us subsidiary a uk subsidiary uh, uh, Indian subsidiary okay they might have like several subsidiaries so all these several subsidiaries will be like trading against each other for example the Indian subsidiary has to pay a uh, thousand dollars and the US subsidiary has to pay six hundred dollars as outflow okay and uh, for the UK subsidiary UK subsidiary has to pay the US subsidiary around some two thousand dollars and the US subsidiary has to pay around some thousand dollars okay so what we do here is we try to net it out so if we net out this position what happens is there is only like four hundred dollars that are like have to be hedged that is an income of us okay income in dollar terms for us if you hedge out if you net out this position what happens is there is a thousand dollar there is a thousand dollar inflow for the company so there is a two types of inflows for the company so the company has to hedge for a total position of 1400 dollars because it is getting an income of uh, net income net dollars from india as 400 and then again a net dollar of 1000 from the uk from the uk so the total external hedging required the total hedging required would be for the thousand four hundred dollars so that's about knitting so the next method is called as foreign currency bank accounts where a firm has regular receipts and payments in the same currency it may choose to operate a foreign currency bank account this operates as a permanent matching process the exposure to exchange risk is limited to the net balance on this account so assume that a company has a regular inflow and outflow of receipts so what it can do is it can create a foreign currency account in that foreign country and for the balance of the net amount alone has to be hedged for example a indian company has a us account okay us account the us account is going to get 600 dollars as inflow and it also has to pay around some 400 dollars as expense so this is their expense and this is their income so how much should be hedged 
the hedging should be only for the $200 because the income is going to be paid as a dollar expense. So the balance of $200 alone has to be hedged. Okay, so that is what about foreign currency bank accounts are. So the next one is matching assets and liabilities. So we'll have an example. Assume that there's an Indian company. This Indian company wants to open a factory in US. So they open a factory in US. This factory is going to sell goods to US people and US people are going to give the dollars or income to the factory at US. Okay. So the company is going to get a lot of dollars and this dollar is going to be like transferred to the Indian company. Okay. And the Indian company has actually got it as a loan. The amount to construct a factory is got as a loan. And for that loan interest, they are going to pay this amount. But the problem is this loan interest is going to be paid in rupee terms. So what happens here is the dollar income is converted into Indian rupee and then paid the interest. So when you convert, there's a conversion problem. So there is a forex risk. So how can you so how can you overcome this part? To overcome this part, we can simply do this mechanism. The Indian company can get a loan at US itself. With that loan, they can build the factory. Okay. So what happens is the interest that has to be paid for this loan is in dollars. So if the company is going to sell good, it might get $100. With that $100, they are going to pay an interest of something like $60. The balance $40 alone would be like converted into rupee and that will go to the Indian company. So rather than having a $100 of Forex fluctuation, now the company has only has to deal with $40 of Forex fluctuation. So this is a better method than the earlier method of borrowing in India and investing in US. Now they have borrowed in US and invested in US and this also selling in US and they also pay the interest in US. The residual amount alone comes to India. So a company which expects to receive significant amount of income in a foreign currency for a few years henceforth would like to protect foreign currency risk. Hence will create an obligation which is paid in the same foreign currency to be received. The foreign currency obligation can be a overdraft payable long term loan. So that's what happens here. So this is the US factory that uh, we have spoken and this is the US loan. So this bank refers to US factory, the dollars that we are going to expect over future period and this is the obligation which he tells the obligation which he tells in the foreign country. So that's about the matching assets and liabilities. It can also be called as asset liability management in Forex. You can reach me at my website wowacademics.com or you can also see my Quora answers. I am active in LinkedIn and in Facebook page. So you can visit at these places. If you just type Sham Prasad and Wow Academics, you will get all these uh, links in Google search itself. And if you like this video, give a like, share to your friends. And if you feel that any points we have missed in this video, you can post it. We will try to uh, give an answer to you in the comment section itself. Or we will also create another video for you. So thank you for watching our video.